will be uh, underutilized so some people can uh, hijack the network important uh, spectrum without uh, without available making it available for the other users and also this uh, spectrum is very expensive for example you can see uh, the 5g spectrum map option happen in germany they have uh, received like about like 7 million billions of euros uh, just for offering the spectrum but uh, uh, what we have like uh, one of the biggest problems in the spectrum so one of even we know spectrum is expensive and spectrum is limited but the biggest problem is spectrum is not optimally utilized so if you look at like how the spectrum is used in the in the any mobile network there are many uh, underutilized areas many many uh, frequency bands are underutilized in many networks most of the time the occupation is less than 6% so wh why this thing is happening one of the biggest reason is like we are using the fixed spectrum uh, assignment policy that means operators are buying the spectrum and they get the fixed spectrum band and they are sticking to that and nobody else can use than the people who buy the spectrum so fixed and the static spectrum allocation is the one of the uh, one of the biggest problems so how we can solve these things so in order to solve this problem so the dynamic spectrum allocation mechanism has been proposed so idea here is like instead of static single, uh, static allocation of the spectrum you can dynamically allocate the spectrum according to the need of the operator and dynamic spectrum is it is very efficient and also there are a lot of research has been proposed how we can do this dynamic spectrum allocation like cognitive radio network pro primary network or sa system so there are many algorithms and also schemes have been proposed how we can do the uh, dynamic spectrum allocation but the problem is like uh, still this dynamic spectrum allocation is not widely adopted because the lot of cost as associated with the uh, spectrum leasing so one of the biggest problem is like you don't know how to identify the spectrum violation because if you do the static allocation it is easy to detect the spectrum violation because you know who's whose spectrum is belong to the uh, which operator but when you are going for the dynamic spectrum allocation the spectrum ownership is constantly changing detection of these uh, spectrum violation is, is problematic so that's also one reason why this dynamic spectrum allocation is not popular and uh, dynamic but uh, on the other hand dynamic spectrum allocation is very important for one new concept which was introduced in pagi called private mobile operator I have explained like the creating of the 5G mobile network become uh, very easy because we went for a uh, software-based co-network allocation where we have we don't need a dedicated hardware to create the mobile network. So the software-based mobile network are cheaper to deploy. For example, you can run a 5G co-network even in the Raspberry Pi, and it will be the operational cost is, is very low according to your network size you can decide which kind of hardware you need so deployment of the core network is now very much simplified so due to that lot of people can act as a mobile operator for example this petrol uh, shire university can be a mobile operator they can create their own mobile network only to the cover the campus region this concept is called as a private mobile operator concept which is becoming very much popular in these days lot of uh, standardization activities is going on how to deploy this private mobile network so many people think this is the future beyond the wifi network because we have much faster and the reliable connectivity using this local private or private mobile operator but the biggest problem related to this private mobile network operator is how to get the spectrum because you need the radio spectrum to transmit Wi-Fi, you don't have problem because you have the dedicated uh, channels to create a Wi-Fi network. But mobile operators are running on the spectrum which is used by the other commercial operator. So this kind of scenario, actually, dynamic spectrum allocation is very interesting because the local private mobile operators they can lease the spectrum from the 
big operators who are running in the country. So, and also another scenario like if, if you want to optimize the network, so you can also integrate the AI technology, you can have much better dynamic spectrum allocation mechanism. So you can go beyond the 6% of utilization to maybe maybe 90% or 96% and it will give much better bandwidth we are trying to achieve with the other solutions. So in this case actually the blockchain can also play a huge role in order to support this dynamic spectrum allocation. So one of the uh, problem in the current uh, spectrum allocation is they are the centralized authority who is deciding uh, which spectrum to be utilized. So if you use uh, blockchain, you can eliminate the centralized authority, you can get the distributed decision, maybe like region-wide decision, and you can have a better uh, spectrum management. And also uh, we can use uh, another problem is like when you have like a spectrum to share with others, you need to have a place to share the spectrum or somebody you need to share the spectrum or you need somebody to buy the spectrum and you need a marketplace to do that. So the blockchain has been identified as an ideal tool to enable the marketplaces. There are many research has been proposed how to create the optioning based marketplaces using uh, blockchain. So we can use this blockchain concept to create this kind of spectrum marketplace where the operators can sell the spectrum and also buyers can buy the spectrum. And also uh, you can have like a decentralized trust between the stakeholders because you need to have a trust between the different operators to sell or buy the spectrum. So the blockchain is ideal place to establish this kind of distributed trust. You don't have to trust each other, you can trust the blockchain system to create the uh, valid transaction. For example, if the uh, money involvement like uh, payment and the receiving of the money, you can rely on the blockchain and use the smart contract to establish this kind of trust. And, okay, so then the dynamic spectrum agreement, so you don't need the static agreement, you can use the smart contract to establish the dynamic agreement, which will be automated and also very scalable. Uh, and also it will, uh, with the smart contract, you can reduce the time to establish the contract, and that will be also uh, improve the business processing time, and also you can uh, use the spectrum as a non-fungible token. So non-fungible token or NFT is the idea of this NFT is like so uh, okay. So if you if you take like any digital currency, you can create any number of digital tokens. You don't need any resources. You can create any number of bitcoins, any number of Ethereum according to your requirement. You don't need anything to create this uh, digital currency. But when it comes to the non-fungible token, you need some kind of physical resource to create something. For example, if you if you create non-fungible tokens again, euros, if you have thousand euros, you can create thousand non-fungible tokens. And that thousand euros is bound to that token. Whoever owns that <coughs> non-fungible token owns that particular euro asset. So you need to have like physical resources to back the non-fungible token. So that concept can be adapted in the spectrum matcher because you have the spectrum, you can you can tokenize the spectrum using non-fungible token. Whoever owns the non-fungible token owns the spectrum. So that will be a very interesting uh, area because you can do a lot of things with the non-fungible token like transfer the ownership, leasing the ownership, and retaining the ownership. All the things you can do with the non-fungible token that will be followed. The, uh, spectrum management as well. So reduce the time of spectrum management and also you can collect a lot of information how the uh, RAM network is performing that can be stored in the blockchain data it can be used for the AI algorithm for the optimization. There are many cases how the blockchain can be used in the spectrum sharing uh, scenario. And the uh, next scenario is like how the blockchain can be used in the private 5G network. So I have actually uh, briefly explained what is the private 5G mobile network means like uh, it's, it's a small scale mobile network which can be run in the, any small scale location. It can be a campus or it can be a hospital, it can be a whole uh, factory where you can deploy a small scale 5G network 
So basically, you can think that the replacement for the Wi-Fi network, but with 5G you have the low latency communication, reliability, high bandwidth, lot of things you can make it. When we are running these 5G uh, local 5G operators, there are many things you need to support. You need uh, spectrum, you need uh, resources, you need uh, virtual network functions on the core network. So how you can get these things? So the blockchain can be a solution to this scenario as well. So the challenge is like how you can obtain in the spectrum, how you can have better roaming and offloading, and how you can optimize the infrastructure sharing, and how also detect the fraud activity. So what is the obtaining the spectrum? I think it's clear, like you have to buy the spectrum from the different people. And the roaming and offloading means like, for example, uh, you have like a, a Vodafone network uh, in the countrywide, but the Vodafone network is not good within the uh, within the university, uh, in the Bradfordshire University. But if you have if you have like a Bradfordshire University has their lo own local 5G mobile network, Vodafone can have an agreement with the Bradfordshire University. They can offload their users. Uh, when they come to the university, university network will provide the services and the board of one will pay some money for the university for supporting their operation. So this kind of concept is, is very popular because we know uh, maybe board of one cannot deploy their uh, like a small cell within the campus. They don't have right to deploy inside the, inside the campus. In this kind of situation, local party operator is the ideal solution to support the user. And optimal for infrastructure sharing means like uh, even these local 5G operators they can create like a like a small slice, network slice, it can rain into the other operators so they can provide the services within the campus. So that kind of solutions are possible. And the fraudulent activity means like it's let's say these local 5G operators buy the spectrum from one operator but they are over utilizing. They have used it for like they bought it to use it for one day, but they are using it for multiple days. That's like a violation. These kind of uh, activities need to be detected. In this scenario also, like the blockchain can be an ideal solution. One of the interesting scenario, like we can uh, create a marketplace to sell the spectrum and also other resources. And what is most important, is, interesting one is like how you can create the uh, reputation system. So the blockchain has been identified as like one of the one of the key key technology to manage the reputation system because nobody can change whatever the data is stored in the blockchain. You can decide uh, reliable reputation system. So you can use the reputation based system uh, in the local 5G operator in order to discover and detect them. Uh, product let's say folders in this kind of system. And also immutable logs can be used in order to resolve any kind of issues which may arise. And also uh, you can use uh, automatic penalty and recording uh, via the smart contract to uh, speed up this kind of uh, application. Speed up the deployment of this kind of application. Okay, and another area like very interesting is the roaming and offloading. I think uh, roaming is, is, is very popular uh, concept because when you are going from one country to other country, you can use the roaming network. Basically, you don't have to buy a new SIM, new SIM card and you can still use the uh, home network uh, feature. But the, one of the biggest problem is this uh, roaming uh, scenario, the static roaming activity. That means your home network operator has an agreement with the visited country's operator, with one of the mobile operators, and only with that operator you can get connected. You don't have the flexibility to connect any operator in the network. In the country, you have to be connected with the uh, operator you have, uh, your home, home network operator has the agreement. But let's assume there's a case, this, this operator will not have the best coverage across the country. We know that, right? So the mobile operator doesn't have the coverage equally across the country. In some, some areas you have the limited coverage, and unfortunately, the operator you have selected 
will not have the best coverage and you are facing the trouble with the connectivity. Be all because, because you have the static equipment, you cannot change the operator. But think about the case like, okay, user can be like the operator he wants to join. So let's say you are going to some country and you find out the operator A has the best coverage and you are seeing, okay, saying, okay, I want to connect with this, this operator and you are requesting your op operator. So you can, you can do it if you have the dynamic uh, uh, roaming agreement scenario because you can request the operator so dynamically create an agreement, roaming rom agreement so they can have the uh, selection to which operator to be uh, connected. The same case can be applied in the offloading scenario also when you are moving from one, one network to another network so some of the users can be offloaded to the second network Select in the best offloading network is also happening in the static manner that will be not, uh, not ideal. And this is roaming scenario becoming very frequent with the local 5G operator scenario because now the roaming happens when you are going from one country to other country. But if you have a lot of local 5G operators or private mobile network, the roaming can happen very frequent. And also roaming situation have the fraud. So usually to detect the roaming fraud it takes like 15 minutes because of the uh, lack of communication between the operators in the real time. That will do a lot of harm within these 15 minutes so there can be a lot of things happen. So in, in, in the roaming scenarios also actually we can use the blockchain based system because now if you think about the traditional uh, roaming scenario we have the data clearing houses, they stand with the connection between the Visitor network and the home uh, operator network. So there, that's why we have a delay when the visitor network is communicating with the home network. But the blockchain type of scenario, you can avoid this uh, uh, digital clearing houses. You can have the blockchain network instead, which will be faster and also provide a better service. So. So as I mentioned, the blockchain can be eliminated this, this, this middleware, so it can be provided a cheaper service and also dynamic agreement. And also you can provide the real-time monitoring over the blockchain, which will be uh, avoiding the roaming fraud. And also it can support the dynamic selection of the network operator, so you can have a better capacity, lower cost and also the higher reputation. And the blockchain can be used to have like dynamic pricing based on the reputation. And another challenge we are facing in the 5G is like uh, one of the big, one of the requirements is to 5G is to interconnect a lot of IoT devices. So if you think about the current mobile network, we have only the uh, mobile device. But in 5G, we are going to interconnect a lot of IoT devices. Maybe like billions of IoT devices will be integrated. The existing subscription management system is not suitable for the IoT scenario. But if you think about today, if you want to connect to a mobile network, you go to the mobile operator, you buy a SIM card, and you give your information, you get registered with the network. That's how the subscription management happens today. But IoT case, it is not possible. Maybe you have like thousands of IoT devices. You cannot go and register thousands of IoT devices in a mobile operator. That model is, is not going to work. And also the payment handling model is also need to be changed because now you have like a session based uh, payment, but IoT devices doesn't use the session. Maybe you are sending a very little amount of data in a, maybe like once a day or something. So you need to have a different model for the payment and the current system is, is not going to work. And the IoT identity management, the SIM card based identity management is also not going to work in IOT. So in, in this kind of situation, actually blockchain can be used uh, as a like IOT solution because we know the blockchain itself is managing like billions of users now. So this uh, public key and private key based uh, identity management can be easily adapted into the IOT case to manage the subscription. And also in IOT scenario, maybe you can you need like some kind of anonymity that can be also provided by an uh, adaptive blockchain uh, system. And also user registration can be automated by other smart contract. That's also another benefit uh, we can do uh, in this uh, subscription management scenario. 
and uh, the last thing that I want to discuss is that AI and IoT data management because in order to run any AI system you need the data. So basically you need to collect the data from, from the mobile network and we reuse to develop the AI algorithm. This data is coming from IoT devices or it can be coming from the base station. So this data, when you have this data, the management is very important. The first thing is like how you can sell this IoT or AI data. How you get money for this uh, data you are collecting. That is like one problem we need to address. And the next thing is like how you can protect the privacy of the data. Because when you are sharing the data you don't know, want to reveal your identity. So you want to make sure the privacy of the data is, is protected. And also another thing is like the control of the data. So that's like the, one of the biggest problems we are facing now. For example, you are uploading the data into the Facebook or Google or something. So Google gets the control of the data or Facebook gets the control of the data. You don't have the control of the data after that. Same thing can happen with the IoT. Once you give the data to one particular user, they can resell it without the involvement of your or without the knowledge of your data. So that's like the, you are using the control of the data. And you need to keep the control of the data almost accessing that. That is also one problem. And also another thing is like you are getting the data from different entities. How you know this data is, is genuine and also useful. Because somebody can send a bad data and it can jeopardize the whole AI system. So how you can ensure this data is legit and also uh, you get the quality data. And also another thing is like how you can motivate the people to supply the data because a lot of people have data, they are not sharing. Like how you can motivate the people to share the data, then you have the better ecosystem. So this issue can be also solved using the blockchain. So this is like one of the solutions we have developed like how you can keep the control of the data and give the access to, uh, to the user according to their requirement. So the blockchain can be used as a, like a marketplace so people can share or sell the data. So this will motivate for people to earn extra money by selling their data. And at the same time we can protect the privacy by integrating the uh, special blockchain based system and also you can keep the control if you are sharing the data via the blockchain based system. And also you can add like automated uh, reputation system so in that way you can ensure who has the good quality data because if you have keep submitting the good quality data your reputation is getting high. If you are sending the bad data, your reputation is going down. And the reputation management can be done using the blockchain and also integrated in the smart contract. So you have the automated reputation management system that can be relied to identify who has the better data. So these kind of solutions can be developed for the data management uh, using blockchain. So there are many applications actually the blockchain can be used. I have selected only a few of them. And the second is like now what we you think of a blockchain is very interesting. There are a lot of things we can do. But unfortunately there are a few challenges we need to address if you want to achieve uh, this, uh, this benefit. So I am going to discuss uh, some of the uh, challenges which are facing when you are deploying the blockchain. So this is where we are doing this and how to address these uh, challenges. One of the biggest challenges we are facing in the blockchain is the feasibility. That means uh, even though blockchain has a lot of benefits, it's not feasible to deploy blockchain in the, in the many applications. So one of the biggest problems is like the lack of standard. Because if you're using the blockchain-based system in the financial sector, you need the approval of the regulator body. They have to have a standard to use this uh, smart contract. For example, if you are using the, in the telecommunication network, you need the approval from the regulator. So that's like the one of the biggest problems. Lack of standards is the, uh, is the one of the reasons for the uh, lack of feasibility. And the technology needs to be, must be advanced. For example, you need to have like a cheaper blockchain deployment and the low cost blockchain deployment, that's also one reason the feasibility of the blockchain has been uh, very easy. And also blockchain can be used in the uh, digitized scenarios if, as long as you can digitize the assets so it's pretty 
then only blockchain can be used. So you cannot use it as other scenario. And also we have the problem of this confidential uh, co cooperating paradox. That means a lot of stakeholders are competing each other. They are likely to collaborate. Even because blockchain is a collaborative platform. Everybody has to contribute in order to run the blockchain system. That is also one of the feasibility challenge uh, we are facing. And the scalability is also uh, important because uh, blockchain uh, systems are storing whatever the information we are going to store in the network. So how we can reduce the uh, growth of the blockchain. I mean, we don't need the blockchain to be exponential growth. So we need to have uh, better ways to manage the blockchain to use it for long run. <coughs> and also we have to talk about like Billions of users are going to use in the blockchain. Now, blockchain are operating in the million scale, like millions of users are there. But in 5G and 6G, we are talking about billions or trillions of users. Then the blockchain also needs to be scaled up to support the billions and trillion users. That's the scalability. It's also another aspect we have to use. Some uh, research are going on, like hierarchical blockchain solutions or sharding, are like one of the solutions. Solution proposed to increase the scalability. And the resource optimization, because uh, one of the biggest uh, limitation a lot of people are mentioning is the massive uh, utilization of the resources. It can be energy, or it can be a processing power, or even the cost of operation. And one of the uh, solutions in order to do that is like we can use uh, some kind of better consensus mechanism which doesn't consume a lot of energy or we can use AI to uh, optimize the task in the blockchain system so that you have to resource optimization. Cost of mining and processing. So operating the blockchain is always uh, problematic. You need uh, extra resources to run the blockchain. If you create a new consensus mechanism or even like private blockchain kind of scenarios, you can reduce the cost of operation and also the possible power you need. The security, uh, okay, blockchain is providing the security, but it, blockchain itself is vulnerable to certain attacks, like majority attack, double spending attack, or range attack. So if you not deploy blockchain uh, properly, so it will be vulnerable to these attacks very easily. That means if you, are, you, if you are creating your own blockchain version, you have to make sure your blockchain system is protected against these attacks. So that's very important. And also blockchain is running as an overlay network on top of an existing network. So it can be an internet or mobile network or other kind of network. So then there can be attack which can be originating from the underlying network. It can be a DOS attack or it can be a man in the middle attack that can jeopardize the operation of the uh, blockchain system. That it cannot be pro protected from the blockchain network itself. But you have to plan like how you can avoid these kind of underlay attacks. So maybe you have to use like off scale security solutions to protect these kind of solutions from the system. And the privacy, blockchain is provides a level of privacy, but it doesn't provide the actual privacy. So still you can identify who has, uh, who's accessing the network. If you identify the pattern, you can identify who is the user of the blockchain. It provides like pseudo anonymity but not the fully anonymity. So you need to integrate the other private solutions like private by design or home office encryption. So those kind of things you have to integrate that to provide the better privacy. Okay, so that's uh, basically covers like how the blockchain can be used in uh, in mobile network and also challenges. I will quickly go through like some of the use cases, the research work we have done. So one of the use cases we have done is like how the blockchain can be used in the local 5G operator network. So we have proposed like blockchain as a service platform where you can deploy a different services which are needed for the local 5G operation for the private mobile network. So we can be deployed using blockchain as a smart contract. So here you can see like uh, uh, this paper was published in this open journal of the communication society. If you want to access, you can uh, find it there. So basically, this paper proposed uh, new services which are deployed for the local 5G operator 
using the smart contracts and also the blockchain. So that can be for the reputation management, uh, for the different stakeholders, activity establishment and the building handling using smart contracts, uh, the fraud prevention service, IoT data management, uh, marketplace service. So most of the application I have proposed and we have deployed using the smart contract team. And also uh, we have implemented this system using the Ethereum platform in the uh, with the uh, Ethereum testator and also you can see we have several smart contracts to deploy this system because then we can deploy as a decentralized application. So the results, uh, some of the results are here. So one of the results here you can see we have compared the blockchain based system with the traditional system in the, in the roaming scenario. So in the roaming scenario initially the traditional system is performing better because we have initial cost of running the blockchain. But when you are in the long run, if you have like longer roaming kind of session, so you can see we have the better benefits with the, uh, with the uh, blockchain than the traditional system. And also we can show here like you can optimize the uh, roaming network selection according to your function. For example, now uh, you have the like a static uh, roaming user selection, but if you want, you can move into the uh, other scenario. So for example, if you can select here like the PS4, the proposed system 4, we consider the cost. We try to connect with the lowest cost mobile operator. So we can define uh, the, what is the selection criteria and we can select the operators with the lowest cost in our system. So in traditional system, it costs like 100. Uh, euros and in our system it costs only 91 euros because our system is capable to identify the lowest cost scenario. We have defined three factors like the signal strength, cost and the reputation. According to your requirement you can optimize the selection process. And the reputation is also another uh, thing we have defined. The reputation can be used to identify who has the better uh, network coverage. So, for example, if you go for the highest, highest of, uh, reputation system, you get the lower error rate than the traditional system. And also, we also if, you, if you think about the reputation deviation of the hardest users, when you have the higher reputation, you have a better service because it has a lower error rate. So, the reputation uh, based network selection is, is beneficial in this uh, scenario. And the second one we have proposed is the blockchain based spectrum violation detection. So I have explained this, uh, uh, the spectrum sharing is, is a problem and that is spectrum allocation is the most interest. The better solution, but the problem here is like, we don't have a way to detect who's violating the spectrum. So the misuse detection is a, is a problem in the dynamic spectrum allocation. So uh, blockchain is a viable solution to do that, but it's still the blockchain is expensive uh, operation. One of the reasons why like blockchain becomes expensive is the proof of work kind of consensus mechanism. Because thing is like, if you think about the Bitcoin network, the main purpose of the Bitcoin network is to store the transaction record. But proof of work has been introduced, everyone is focusing on the mining operation. They don't care about the transaction recording. They try to win the winning, uh, winning miner or becoming the winning miner. This is where they get the most money. And that is where they are using a lot of the processing power. So now they are focusing on unwanted tasks. That's not the major task, but they are focusing on something else. And that consumes a lot of energy. We thought that's like the one of the uh, problem in the most of the blockchain. Because you have the major task or the main task. Nobody pays attention to that, but they are focusing on the consensus task, which is not related to the main task. But, but, uh, but if we can combine these two, I mean, there's no two other tasks. You're focusing on one task, the major task, and within that task, you select the mining process as well. Then everyone will be focusing on the main task. We don't have two different tasks. We are focusing on one task for the minor selection and also the main operation. So we are thinking on, on that angle, we have created a new consensus protocol which can be uh, used in the spectrum sensing scenario. 
So for example, if you, if you think about the spectrum testing or spectrum violation detection, the main thing we need to do is like we have to monitor the sensors. We have to collect the sensor spectrum information to detect the violation. So in this case, we have motivated everyone in the network to monitor the network. While you are monitoring the network, you can also become in the winning miner by capturing a certain uh, hidden messages. So that's way we can combine the both mining tasks and also the main task in the, in the solving. So this is the one we have proposed as a proof of sense, as a new consensus protocol for the spectrum detection. <coughs> so idea here is like uh, everyone is sensing the spectrum to detect the spectrum violation. At the same time, the regulator is uh, hidden, uh, sending a hidden message uh, time to time via the network. It's like a part of the secret message. So everyone who's listening to the network can capture the hidden message part. If they capture enough number of uh, message part, they can become the winning miner. So basically, they have to listen to the network to collect these hidden messages. If they collect enough number of hidden messages, they become the winning miner. So in this way, we have motivated the miners to do the, the main task of the network is to monitor the network. So whatever information which are collected during the, uh, the hidden part collection will be also stored in the blockchain. This information will be used to do the uh, spectrum optimization or spectrum violation detection. All the things can be done by the information which, are, which we are collecting. So we have published this research work in the uh, proof of sales of the normal consensus mechanism for spectrum detection. Uh, if you are interested, you can check that one as well. So and we have implemented our consensus algorithm uh, using hyper devices and also Raspberry Pi. Uh, so and we have measured what is the energy utilization. So you can see here the proof of sense, the proposed solution is has the very low energy utilization, quite similar to the proof of stake scenario. Uh, it's very much less than the proof of work scenario. So this was uh, the highest value up to four, but it's still for the highest value of the code, it's using almost uh, 50 times of the uh, energy than other systems. But if you think about Bitcoin, it's using the hash value of uh, 20 or something. I think it's like million times higher energy than that, what we are using. And also we have shown like you can change the uh, difficulty of the consensus mechanism by using the wireless channel uh, uh, parameters.